you guys what's going on welcome back to the third episode of my 15 minute trading day and in today's video i am going to give you guys a few updates to a few currency pairs that i've looked at trades that i was in trades that are still running and trades that i'm looking at right now so let's go ahead and start with the trades that i am looking at right now and if you don't know me, my name is Shaquan and I am the Forex Educator here at SLFX Trading. And what I do is I teach people how to simplify their trading and create 15 minute trading days. I don't believe that trading has to be overwhelming. You just have to know what you're looking at. Now, for me personally, I trade by three rules that need to be met. Number one is trend. Number one is structure. Number one is price action has to meet market structure while price is in a trending fashion. That's all. That's all I'm looking for. If I don't have those three rules met, your girl don't enter a trade. So with that being said, as always, we're going to start with the dollar index. Now, looking at the dollar index here, you guys, what you're going to notice is price topped at here at $94.76. The last area that we were just at was at $93.67 as far as our last higher low being, our higher high being made. Easy to get tongue tied with these highs and lows. The last higher low made was at $92.70 as I have a red line here. You guys, this is the number we need to see price stay above. The reason why we need to see price stay above it is because if we're thinking that price could continue to the upside, this is a really good key way to say, hey, if price is going to continue to the upside, we need to stay above a particular number, a particular price or exchange rate now why do we want price to stay above that number because this is the last higher low what's attached to that higher low there's a candle attached to this higher low you guys to this number and this is this beautiful rejection candle we need price to stay above that candle now why do we need price to stay above that candle what's showing us that price could potentially continue to the upside keyword is potential we're going to go over here to the monthly time frame for a quick second as you guys can see, um, for most of this year, ever since the month of, and we're going to just say May because we had a bearish candle closure in May, price has been dropping. So we've been selling off on the dollar. But the thing is, ever since we've been selling off on the dollar, um, you know, things can't go down forever. Like you have to have that mindset. Like there needs to be a pullback eventually, especially for a lot of people to be able to participate. Now, because we are traders and we're trading this information, it's easier for us to jump in the market and participate because we'll be in and out quicker, right? But the thing is, you have to know when there's a potential turnaround coming and turnarounds can be reversals and turnarounds can be retracements. So if we really look here on the monthly time frame, um, we had a very beautiful bullish engulfing candle. And it's a bullish engulfing candle, which means that price could potentially continue to the upside. So let's talk about this here. On Instagram, I had a ask me anything in my stories. And someone asked me, how do you use the monthly time frame, the weekly time frame and the daily time frame to trade? So for me personally, the way I use those time frames is I use them the same, right? I'm not a firm believer that price does anything different on um, each time frame. I'm a believer in you have to know the cycle that your time frames are trading in and you trade those cycles accordingly, right? So because I see this bullish engulfing candle on the monthly time frame, I'm thinking price can go up. When I drop down to my daily time frame to find the entry, I have the same mindset that I need to buy. I need price to push up on the daily as well. I need to show me the evidence because whatever the monthly time frame is showing me, guess what time frame showed me the clues first? The daily time frame. So let's drop down to there. Looking back at the daily time frame, right? We just closed off on the month of September. Why did price close bullish as a bullish open candle on the monthly? So the month of September, as you look, this was price pushing down. It was doing beautiful lower highs and lower lows here the month of August. Then we, the month of September, the first, we had this beautiful rejection candle. Price came in past $93.48. This is why we have $93.67. When we got this higher high, even here on YouTube, in my private trading coaching group, I was like, hey, you guys, we may need to start looking at um, the dollar, even dollar Swiss, especially the dollar Swiss for a particular buy because I do think price is going to be able to push up. And what did USD Swiss do? It pushed up. What did Euro USD do? What did AUD USD do? They pushed down, right? And so when we look at it here for the month of September, this is why we have that bullish engulfing candle on the monthly time frame because the, the information here on the lower time frames gave it away. So with that being said, 
we're now back in an area for me where I feel like price could potentially push up to right and because price can potentially push up from this area looks like we're going to be closing as a subjective bullish engulfing candle this candle closes here within the next two hours it's not a uh, currency it's an indice which we you know you have to really be careful about this is an index that shows the strength or the weakness of the dollar and if we close as this bullish engulfing candle guess what i'm thinking is about to potentially happen next my usd pairs will potentially push up to the upside pairs like euro usd aud usd will potentially drop to the downside the keyword is always potential because we don't know for sure what's going to happen we just have to follow what the, the trades give us what the currencies give us what the index is giving us basically what the price chart is showing you okay so with that being said, you guys, where's the next area I'm thinking dollar index can go to? Right back up here at the previous highs at $94.70 and further beyond, right? Why am I saying that? Because now if you look at it, price is now making higher highs and higher lows. Follow the yellow brick road. We follow that road until price tells us it no longer wants to go, okay? So that's that part there. And if you're on my email list, make sure you check the email from yesterday because I sent out a story behind or entanglement story behind the uptrend and the downtrend kind of made it like a little story fairy tale poem mode so you know just a written out mode so go ahead and check that out uh, from yesterday's emails if you're on my email list now let's go into euro usd really quick because i don't want to make this video too long okay because already five o'clock gotta see if i got something going on okay now euro usd if you know anything about how i trade or how i teach or what i love to do you know i like correlating currency pairs right um i think that euro usd and the dollar index i think they correlate negatively so if you looked at the candle it was a subjective subjective bearish a uh, bullish engulfing candle that could close for the day even though it has two hours left well guess what's closing bearish today euro usd okay now it's not a bearish engulfing candle and i always say these pairs do not correlate 100 percent of the time i would say probably 90 to 95 percent of the time these pairs will correlate negatively which means they move oppositely they mirror image one another and so if we're looking at it this way price is in the zone i'm still in my sale my sale candle was here this is from september 21st i've been holding this trade ever since then once again you guys this is just a part of being a swing trader you hold trades when they're in profit you hold trades and drawdown you just hold trades until price either hits your take profit or your stop loss you let the market tell you when it's wrong you let the market tell you when it's right that's all you can really do right this is how we make our money as swing traders with that being said um price is today today now has closed as a bearish rejection candle within my zone and this is something that the swing trading society and i have been talking about now um i've been holding my sale i'm gonna stay in my sale i like where i'm selling at and so you know now i'm back in profit so if this pair can continue to go down you guys i am still looking at the 1350 ish area which is down here or 13.5 areas which is down here i'm looking for this to be a next area that i believe price can go why is that because the momentum of this currency pair has been pushing up for so long that you know sometimes a pullback is needed it doesn't have to give me a deep pullback price doesn't have to do anything it doesn't want to do but because we are making now lower lows and lower highs I'm thinking somewhere in this area, if we stay below 119.18, somewhere in this area could potentially be um, the next lower high back to the downside so we can start um, trending down in the downtrend or a retracing downtrend because this pair is now bullish, a retracing downtrend, um, which would be the retracing cycle per the higher time frames. I'm thinking that we can go ahead and go down and come back down to 13, 15, 13 fives, one dollar and 13 fives and below. So this is a thought, this is a thought, okay? But it's showing that it has potential. I'm back in profit, I'm good to go. All right, so my entry candle was here, it's tested here. Am I going to enter into another trade? More than so likely, yes, because now that I can enter into another trade, what's going to happen is I'm going to decrease my risk on this trade. It won't be break even, but the risk won't be so high. So that's that part there. Once again, this is another part of being a trader. So using my fibs, um, I'll enter 
already the first trade will go back down here to the previous low anyway second position will go down here to the negative 27 and then i'm done for this pair here i probably won't enter into another trade unless we get a new low lower high and then we start to trend down so that's it okay so that's your usd now i'm going to go over to usd swiss usd swiss is looking so beautiful you guys so same thing different technique but follows the dollar index so dealing with the dollar index you guys this is the first thing i start with the dollar index euro usd and then usd swiss especially for the swing trading society um we start here because they are they are really good correlators they're currency pair correlators they move well together and this is how you can maximize your profits as a swing trader okay because i don't day trade because i'm not trading every day because i don't have my i'm not jumping in and out of trades risking new trades every single day you know you have to really learn how to maximize your profits especially when you get out of a position you're no longer have a position running which means you could be waiting days or weeks or even months for the next setup so you have to kind of have a trade that's running for you in cycles okay this is why market cycles are very important so now looking here prices in a zone of mine uh, my weekly zone very very beautiful zone we're closing as a beautiful bullish rejection candle and if this holds true you guys i will potentially be looking for price to push back up to the previous highs here at 92 cents or almost 93 cents and back here further to 93 six cents over here all right so really quick you guys usd swiss and let me talk about quick analysis you guys I've done videos on how to do quick analysis and I may re end up redoing another video maybe in the next month or two and I'll link the video cue card up here or in one of these areas so that you guys can see um, the tips I give to do really quick analysis because if you have your chart set up for you already when you enter a trade it should take you literally less than five minutes which is why I teach people how to have 15 minute trading days at the most 30 minute trading days because you don't have to sit here and watch these candles form right that's the one thing you don't want to do because it creates bad psychological habits okay so that's that so that's usd swiss we're going to quickly get into AUD USD. now i am not in this pair right now so we had a bearish engulf subjective bearish engulfing candle that closed for the month of september um looking at the weekly time frame you guys can see how price has fallen pretty well for going back down to the daily time frame oh this is beautiful so we have a, a new low here this could be put the potential lower high all right so let's talk about this two ways number one i enter on the daily time frame we have a very beautiful bearish engulfing candle going on today um this could be a really and i was telling twin trade society that this could be a really good area to potentially take some entries from it could go a little bit higher and the potential keyword is potentially higher but this is showing some really good significance here uh rejecting my moving averages so this is really really good right and so let's see here rejecting here around the 50 percent let's make sure it is yep rejecting around here at the 50 percent i don't trade let me put it to you guys this way i am not a trader of key or golden field levels it's wherever structure is and i do have structure around here which is why this line is very important for me and so um i was telling the swing trading society that i do think that price could come back down here around 69 7 areas and so if that is the case we could see a drop here on AUD USD and once again that's because it's just following the dollar index right now I don't think that AUD USD follows the dollar index as closely as it does with um, Euro USD but you know once again follow the yellow brick road wherever the road may go you know follow, follow the yellow brick road wherever the road may go and so this is looking like a really good area to trade I would not trade back down to the zero or the previous low I'd actually have to trade beyond that and that would be back down here to the 0.679 or either the negative 27 because this is such a big volume candle and based on where i place my stop losses i still can't even trade here well i because if one thing about it i, I follow my rules right and this is probably why i'm not in AUD USD because it's not following my rules so this one isn't because if i place my stop loss my stop loss will have to go up here and this uh the, the risk is at 229 pips i don't really mind that what i mind is that my take profit is less than my reward 
I don't want to adjust this stop loss and use rules that I technically wouldn't use. And I have options on how I can use this stop loss. But I, like I said, I understand that it could push up a little bit higher. And if it does push a little bit higher, I'll give you guys the exact number to where she could push up to. It will be back here at 0.71615. I'll even zone it out for you guys. Like this could be the exact area where she does pull back. She could pull back here. And this is why I like zones because I always tell people I don't take a trade unless my trades are highlighted, right? And so one thing I teach a swing and trading society is you have to know where price can pull back to because that's just, that's kind of how you get the most optimum um, trading opportunities. And that's how I get optimum trading opportunities as well. It's understanding where price can pull back to. So for my four hour traders, right um if you're a four hour trader and you're wanting to sell but you don't like this one candle well don't i wouldn't say try to trade all the way back up here is i would try to trade under that number but we don't even know if that's our lower high yet so i can't put that there so we kind of have to wait right um but what i would say is this could be the next area price could pull back too and then she could drop but this is really beautiful it's not fitting my rule setup but i'm gonna give the setup away anyway because your stop loss could be less than mine or you could already be in the trade um so that's this here so i'll wait for the pullback um the next one that we're going to look at is we're going to look at some updated potential moves okay so euro usd looks good usd swiss look good aud usd looks good if it's fitting your rules make sure it's fitting your rules i'm not by any means telling you guys to enter into these trades i'm just telling you guys what i'm looking at so i'm going to show you guys that i showed the swing trading society yesterday so I showed them two potential trades on Euro AUD. Um, this is the one that I said, hey, this is looking potentially good to the upside, Euro AUD. Uh, we have a higher high. This could potentially be the higher low. And the price could go up to the negative 27. So um, here around $1.67. This could be the next area where price could potentially go because it's making higher highs. This is a potential higher low. Um, price on Euro AUD is actually to the upside. So especially if you get the higher time frames, weekly and the monthly time frame, you'll be able to see it. So we'll see if price can potentially push up. And oppositely, like how I was saying with AUD USD, where price can potentially come and retest next. This has a potential retest area as well, which is going to be down here at $1.64. Once again, understanding unless price just keeps going up because of the momentum, where's the next place that price could potentially go? It's going to be, it's going to have a slight pullback right or it could have a slight pullback and if it does what does that pullback look like so i know it's here but i am in this trade um i am running up now the highest i ran up today was 110 pips i'm holding this position okay one of the next ones that i'm looking at um is right here on euro cad only because of this one area right here that's the only reason why i'm in it because we're making higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows higher highs um, my setup is highlighted. So once again, I don't enter unless it's highlighted. We had a bullish engulfing candle. I have entered on that bullish engulfing candle. Price closed today as a doji. Hopefully it closes as a bullish confirmation tomorrow, but I am in this trade here. Um, got in because of the bullish engulfing candle. I'm hoping that this candle is the next higher low so we can continue to go back up to the upside. Okay, so that's this trade here. And I'm also in AUD CAT to the downside, AUD Swiss to the downside, Aussie dollar New Zealand dollar to the downside as well, too. All right, now let's talk about trades that are running that may that you know I'm still hoping can run in our favor. One of them is going to be pound AUD now. I sent this out, uh, it was either last week or the week before last. I'm pretty sure this was probably last week, though, talking about the potential 1500 mo pip move that I hopefully I can still gain. So dealing with this particular currency pair here, um, this one correlates as well with AUD USD, just like Euro U just like Euro AUD does, right? And dealing with this one, um, one thing that you I'm learning in trading is follow your rules always. Now I'm in drawdown on this pair. So I'm not gonna get out of the trade just because I'm in drawdown because it can still go my way. And I'm hoping that it can still go my way, right? I'm hoping I can get those fifteen hundred move that hold fifteen hundred pips from the combined moves that I'm already in. If not, that's fine. That's okay. It's always okay because you can always make the money back. 
But for right now, I am in drawdown. This was my entry candle. So I'm just holding firm. Whatever happens to this trade happens. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I am still in it. It's still running for its sale. If she hits profit, she hits profit. If she doesn't, she doesn't. Once again, either let the market tell you you're wrong or let the market hit your profit. This is how you, and I get asked all the time, Shaquan, how do you hold trades? This is one of the ways I hold my trades. I just let it run, okay? Um, One of the next ones that we're going to look at, I'm going to do a Euro Swiss update. I gave this one out two weeks ago. I entered the trade here on this candle. Price ran up very beautifully. And when it did, I moved my trade to break even here. And as you guys can see, it did come and take me out for, uh, it took me out for break even one or two pips in profit. I'm no longer in the position. I'll wait to see if I can have another entry. And if so, I'll take it again back up to the upside. And if price just gives me a new low and tells me, Shaquan, just forget it, I'm going to forget it, okay? So I'm not just going to jump in because I can. I want to see if I can get a bullish candle in my direction. One of my leading candles in my direction, okay? Uh, one of the next ones that we will look at is going to be pound USD. Pound USD came and took me out of my trade by a by literally um a few pips of 147 pips right and i was going for a target of 284 pips right and so my entry candle was around this area here um after this candle here the rejection candle my stop loss went up to the 100 fib level um and it just came and took me out so okay you know because i mean now i'm already made my money back from other trades which is why i'm saying from the beginning you have to have trades that are cycling, that are rotating because you can always make the money back. And because I'm swing trading, it does take me a while to get stopped out of a position. So it gives me time to think the next trade through and maneuver. So am I going to enter this again because it's still in my area? More than likely, probably so. Yes, because it's still fitting my trading rules and my trading setup, right? So I have no choice but to enter again. Um, so. That's what I'm looking forward to doing potentially on this one. I'm just going to reanalyze it. I'm not going to redo my chart. I just need to reanalyze this full pair and make sure that the next position I get into, because it is still fitting, make sure that when I get into it, I'm getting into it for the right reasons. So because psychology plays a part in this, like, okay, Shaquan, you just lost this trade. Do you really want to get back into it again? So, you know, I have to make sure that if I get into it, I'm getting into it for the right reasons. Not because of money, but because it fits my setup. And if it fits my setup, I make money. So that's that part there. Um, and then after that, you guys, really, that's about it. I had a few trades that hit profit. USD Swiss hit profit a while back, as you, um, as I explained it. Um, Euro USD is still running. I have a lot of trades that I've been in and they're still running some are new from yesterday you know and so i'm honestly just on my hands right now because i don't want to it's a good question i got yesterday in a, in a private session um uh, one of my my students who she takes one-on-one sessions with me she asked me how many trades should i get in you know as far as how many trades should i be in as far as my percentage goes because of how much she risked and I told her as much as your account allows you to that your where your margin level is protected and we had a whole discussion on margin level margin and free margin this is why understanding numbers in your brokers is very important and I try to make sure I break those numbers down so that they they are understood and I even had to break down why leverage is important because leverage it's not based on how much your broker gives you. It's based on the price pulls back. How much space is your broker allowing you to trade with, right? So this is something that, you know, it has to be calculated, but the system will already calculate it for you. So I told her, as long as the, the broker isn't telling you you're close to being margin call because you don't have enough space, you can put in as many trades as you want as long as they fit your setup. But I'm not out here teaching people how to enter to 10 trades at a time, though. So that's really important. But I made sure to tell her if it fits your setup, if it fits your rules, you keep entering as long as that margin is there. So that's that part there. Okay, you guys. But other than that, I will say this is my 15 minute trading day. <laughs> but this video is a little bit longer, but that's fine. I'll start a little bit late. But I really wanted to make sure that I went over some really good setups with you guys. My mindset behind the setups, understanding that your analysis does not have to be long and drawn out. It can really be quick 
And then also understanding too that if you have your chart set up for you, then you don't have to guess where your next trade will come from. Because like I said, I always try to make sure my trades are highlighted for me, okay? Um, but other than that, you guys, I will see you guys tomorrow for Wednesday's video. I didn't put one out yesterday on Monday. But this was going to start going out on Tuesdays, right? My 15-minute trading day. And so hopefully you guys are going to have a great trading week. I'm going to manifest it with you. Make sure you follow your rules. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.